five. Today's a little bit of a different day. Taylor's out working on some other projects and some stuff you're going to hear about later. So we're here with Sabrina today. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about a subject matter that I think has just been circulating and popping back up every time I'm on social media, particularly on TikTok. And that is child exploitation on these specific platforms. This is something for me that is just a hard hitting issue that I don't think enough people are talking about. And you've heard me say on the show, probably on several occasions, when I have children, I am not posting them. You are not going to get pictures of my newborn. You're not going to get videos of them on TikTok. I'm not making parenting videos. I'm not doing any of that trash because from being on TikTok, I just see how wrong it can go, even with the best intentions. And I know, Sabrina, you've seen the same. Amen to that. I mean, um, I understand why people post on their personal. Like, sure. I actually, I have a personal page that is only people I know in my close right. private life. I'll post photos of my son on there. Right. But on my public facing, you will never see my son's face. You will never see his name. Um, you might see a foot on occasion or the back <laughs> of his cute curly hair, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah, and I notice whenever you post on your public page and your kid's in it, you cover their face with an emoji or something like that. And, and what made you come to that decision? Unfortunately, I just feel like there are too many strange people out there. One, I get trolls. I, I could care less. But mm -hmm. like when you're saying something about kids, there are people, especially on the left, sadly, that will go that low. And yeah. I just don't want to see it. Yeah, and I, I agree. It's just unbelievable. And it was something that I never really given much thought to until I was on these platforms and I heard people speaking up about the problems that they were facing. Some parents who had posted their kids and were then facing problems. And just this general air of a culture that is so fine with exploiting children so long as it brings profit, so long as it goes viral, so long as they get these beautiful validating comments on their, their parenting, how they've raised their child, how cool their kid is. And that can all be be good and fine and it can be from a good place it can be from a fun place where you're just trying to create something with your child in the age of technology but I think it's important to talk about the negative aspects of it so let's set the stage for this conversation and I think a reason why it probably needs to be had here's the hill.com uh, this is a recent survey done in 2022 one in four Gen Zers plan to become social media influencers it says with influencer culture permeating the younger generations and becoming prominent as time goes on it's uh it's a movement unlikely to falter anytime soon now one in four Gen Zers are saying that they now want to be influencers they want to be on social media they want to be those fun people who everybody in the internet is following to see what their daily life is like and this is what TikTok culture is like you see a lot of young individuals some in their teens, some even younger than teenagers who are posting their lives on the internet and getting millions and millions of likes because of this. TikTok made the TikTok dancers famous. People like Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, two sisters who are now millionaires just from doing TikTok dances. It's insane. Yeah, so sadly, I think we used to see, you know, how right now we're seeing what happened with child stars. If anyone's followed what's going on with Jeanette McCurdy and a lot of people that came out of Disney or mm -hmm. even Nickelodeon as young kids, how exploited they were, the damage that was done. And I think that we're going to see this in tenfold in a couple years, but with TikTok kids. Yep, it's going to catch up and we're talking about how mental illness is such an important thing for young people and how we need to be doing stuff that uh, that elevates them and elevates their self-esteem while at the meantime like thrusting them onto the internet and onto social media and I want to talk about this uh, as it pertains to particularly young people we're going to talk about below 18 there's a whole other episode we can do for the above 18 influencer sort of market and what's happening there and I want to make the distinction that right now we are talking about minors people who are not able to advocate for themselves. If you're an adult and you want to use social media, and even if you're a minor and I feel like you're using social media in a way that is creative or a passion project, that is a different category for me. But we have parents now who are filming their kids eating food, filming the conversations that they're having with their children, filming their children's tantrums, filming little funny moments with their kids, filming unboxing videos like we see in Ryan's World, one of the largest YouTube channel for children here in the United States. And this is where we start, I think, having conversations about exploitation and about parents not only profiting off of their ch children, but putting their children in dangerous situations that they're unfamiliar and unaware of in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, I'm kind of nervous to with where we're going, but yeah. I think it's going to be good. Let's get into it. So I something that really sparked this for me, and I, I want to be clear, this kid is adorable. I saw this video, and I think I had the same reaction that everybody else in America had. This kid is so cute. We love his passion. I love how he's talking. It's the corn kid. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. I'm sure you all are semi-familiar, and if you're not, I'm going to make you familiar with him. We want to do our best in this episode to show as few of these children as possible. So much of the conversation we're going to be having surrounding these kids is just going to be talking and describing them to you. However, I am going to show you this corn kid video because... I mean, it is sword. I don't think there's a person around who has not seen this video and we'll get into the reasons why and sort of things that have happened subsequent to this video. But let me show you it. It is very cute. He is adorable. I understand why it's gone viral. Here's the corn kid. For me, I really like corn. What do you like about corn? Ever since I, I was told that corn is real, it tasted good. Did you think corn wasn't real? <laughs> and when I tried it with butter, everything changed. I uh. love corn. Mmm, corn. Do you think everyone should be eating corn? No, not everyone has to like it to be the best. Yeah. Everyone just has to try it. Have a day. <laughs> so what else cute. are your favorite Super things? Cute. I play a variety of games. Hide and seek. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there. Basically, he goes on in the video to just talk more about how much he loves corn. And this video went, I mean, internationally viral 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 everybody's seeing everybody's talking about how much they love the corn kid they love his passion for, <laughs> for corn <laughs> i feel like he's kind of like the new um i love turtles kid yes Do you remember him yes i, I love like, turtles yeah yeah, yeah the apparently kid apparently <laughs> i've never been on live television before <laughs> there are a lot of really famous and infamous i don't know if i want to call them infamous but famous videos of children that go viral all the time because you know kids just say the darndest things type culture and i get that this is adorable i completely understand why it's gone viral but let's talk about what's happened subsequent to this millions of people see this child see this corn video it's hilarious and immediately because there is so much market value in being a viral individual these companies hop on this child here is the the next video i saw of this kid 1.2 million likes on this but it's not him making a video it's cameo and for those of you who don't know what cameo is it's an app that celebrities and influencers can use and everyday people who want a cameo video from that person can purchase it from them and get them to say whatever they like. If I put myself on cameo, you guys could message me, pay me and say, could you say happy birthday to my grandma? And I'd make that video for you and send it over. Here's the corn kid uh, days after he goes viral on cameo. Hello, cameo fans. Have a fantastic day and not to worry. Because street corn season is on through September. That's enough of that. So immediately, because we see that we can capitalize on the views that this kid is going to get sheerly from being cute and adorable, we throw him on Cameo. And it's not just Cameo. Here's Chipotle. This video got 28 million views, 28 million views, more views than Chipotle has had on any single ad they've put out on their TikTok yet. No, thank you. And me? No. Mild? No. Sour cream? No. Any corn? It's corn! You wanna- And I hope- I hope at the very least this kid is like making his college tuition doing this stuff so at least it's valuable in some way but and I know people are going to see this and be like well what's wrong with that if he's going to make a quick buck off of this corn video isn't that really good isn't that good for his family and in ways it is and I can see where a parent might make that decision for their child but you have to think about like the long term ramifications of this the Chipotle one okay I see it it's a Chipotle ad the cameo one particularly concerning because who in their right mind, other than maybe like a young girl who thinks he's super cute, like a, a mom or something, mm -hmm. is going to pay for a video of your child talking to them? Yeah. Who? It's really odd. I want to bring up someone. Do you remember Mason Ramsey? 
Yeah, the yodeling, yodeling kid. kid. The yodeling Walmart car. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Will, I will at least give him credit. I think that, so his grandparents, like, raised him. And I think that they've done the best job for one of these viral sensations and what they've done. Because he's not really in the limelight as much anymore. I think he recently maybe had one song come out that he released on his own. But um, basically what happened is, like, now he's just, like, he's working at a subway, going to school. His, his grandparents let him do a couple of the, like, go on Ellen and have mm-hmm. a few viral moments. And then they, like, brought him back to normal life, to his normal home. And they had him go get a normal job and go to school right and they, he's like the only kid I've seen really that's come out of this viral sensations that seems like a bit well adjusted yeah and it's insane because you know a lot of people will see and be like oh, well why are we talking about this it's one kid or whatever it's not just one kid mm-hmm. there is a culture of it after being logged on on TikTok and like scrolling through my for you page I am amazed by the amount of parents who are building their lifestyles and uh, gaining all of their income through making videos of their children and like I said they're they're not necessarily inherently negative videos some of them are parenting style videos that that uh, parents are making what my kid eats in a day videos that they're posting on the internet but it's ex- exploitation of mm-hmm. your child your child is not in a, a position to consent to what you are doing and to consent to millions of people seeing their face seeing their likeness watching what they're doing watching how they're living on any given day and you have no idea who's watching that content from your child and the internet lives forever. So it it's like, that's going to follow that kid whether they like it or not. They're not consenting to it when they're young children and you have millions of eyes on it and people that save and screen record. And then what if that follows them in a couple of years? You never yeah. know. I just personally don't think it's worth the risk with kids. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people coming out and saying, you know, this is child exploitation and it's becoming a debate on the internet. And a lot of people are saying, well, if you're going to call that child exploitation, what about somebody like Ryan's World? Here's Ryan's World page, uh, his page. For those of you who are unfamiliar with him, he's a kid that just does unboxing videos of toys. And because he's so famous among other kids in America, he has 33.2 million subscribers. So we're talking millions, maybe even billionaire at this point because he has his own toy line. We have brand uh, brand deals where brands are sending him toys with hundreds of thousands of dollars, I can only assume at this point, just to get him to unbox them live for other children to see. And they've completely capitalized on his likeness and on his reaction to opening up toys. So his whole life essentially is is filmed on the internet, which just... Uh, how many videos would feel, you guess? I have, let's see. I don't know if it will even tell us That's how many crazy. videos he has. Yeah, I don't know if it will if it will even tell us, but look. Wow. Look at how many videos this kid has. And he's been doing it, I think, for a number of years now. Just video after video after video after video of this young kid. And all of them, look at that. 66 million views, 2.3 million views, 8.5 million views, 127 million views, 12 million views, 35 million, 20 million. It's insane. And I find it extremely hard to believe that the millions of views that this kid are getting are are all other wholesome children trying to watch him unbox uh, toys. You know what I'd be so curious to know is if any of these kids that like have these big YouTube followings, if their parents when they were little had baby cams that were connected to Wi-Fi or not. Mm. This is like a random, I don't even know if you've ever heard of this, but as a new, relatively new mom, my son just turned one yesterday. Congrats. Um, (laughs) We survived a year. Um, (laughs) But anyways, he, so basically like when you have a a baby camera, you usually don't want to get one that connects to the Wi-Fi because unfortunately there's a lot of creepy people out there Mm -hmm. that either for secure, because they either want to break into your home or watch your kid, they will hack baby cameras. So the best thing you can do for a baby monitor is get one that doesn't connect to Wi-Fi. Um, and so I wonder how many of these parents had that, but then they go and they post their kids all over social media anyway. Right. So it's at the end of the day, I think a lot of the times it could be a security threat and it's a safety issue for your kid. It is. And this is sort of the next leg of the conversation is the danger that this actually poses to children. And I think the reason that this episode is important, it's not a topic that we usually talk about. We normally stay in, in politics and culture, although this is a cultural problem, it seems to me. I think a lot of parents will unknowingly engage in this sort of activity. Your child's super cute. You want Mm -hmm. other people to see your child. You think this moment's going to go viral. Let's post it on the internet. But time and time again, people are running into massive problems with this. I was reading today just to do a little bit of looking into this about whether or not, uh, you know, 
Homeland Security is aware of this, whether or not the FBI and the CIA are doing investigations into what's happening on TikTok. And apparently, here's here's what's written here. Between 2019 and last year, Homeland Security investigations of crimes originating on TikTok has risen over 600 percent. 600 percent. And if you think about the millions, if not probably a billion users that TikTok has on its platform, think of how many crimes are originating on that platform in particular. I've seen many different issues with parents and mothers who are posting their kids on the internet and then actually looking into the analytics on their pages and finding horrifying things. There was a baby, and I'm not even going to state her name, uh, but I came across many of those videos on the internet and other moms started going on the TikTok accounts, searching through the followers and trying to get a look at what the demographics were. And they were skewed heavily in the direction of men heavily in the direction of older men. And TikTok now has an option where you can go and bookmark videos and save them. And you'll see a video of a child eating food, a, a young baby, and it's been seen by maybe a million people and 100,000 people have bookmarked that video. Can anybody else explain to me why that would be the case? And I know there's probably a demographic of women who go, oh my gosh, that's really cute, bookmark. What a cute kid. But is it 100,000 women? who are bookmarking those videos. It's crazy, because where do you think this stems from? Because I personally, you know, being a new newer parent, like I think a lot of it, parenting is already a very insecure thing. You never know if what you're doing is right. Um, so I think that there are, I'm noticing a lot of millennial moms, especially, po they're the ones that are driving this, like posting their kids on social. And I don't know if they're seeking validation, whether it's for parenting or for what's the focus of their life. And mm -hmm. if that's where they're, why they're putting it out there, what do you think it could be? I, I think so there's so many different stages to this. I think it is like, look at my child, look at what I created. And I think there is a certain pride in that. And I think that's great. It's also look at my parenting skills, look what I'm doing with my child. There's another part of that. A validation, people telling you your kid's so cute. I think that's probably one of the main drivers of it. Mm -hmm. There's also monetary gain, which is something that I'm seeing a lot of young women doing on the internet who are now new moms is making videos with their children. And these videos are getting, when I, millions of views, millions of views, hundreds of thousands of likes. And if you're aware of how TikTok works, how the creator fund works, how sponsorships work, you're talking thousands upon thousands of dollars for videos of your child. And that's an easy thing to do. Your child's right there. Your phone's right there. Why not take the video? Why not talk about how you raise your kids? There's now mommy bloggers and mommy, mommy vloggers who are videoing their day with their children because they're stay at home moms. And if that's making you supplemental income, why would you not do it? It totally is the next wave of child actors because unfortunately mm -hmm. a lot of these kids are put in those positions, not even because they necessarily want to act, but because their parents either have that dream for them or they need the income. Yep. And so then they have the pressure of also being the sole provider of their families. And I feel like this next wave of TikTok kids, they're the next wave of child stars, unfortunately. They are. And it's, it's crazy how young they're getting. I'll scroll through my For You page. And now there, there are these two twin babies, not going to say their names. They're viral to the tune, I think, I, I wanna see how many followers this lady has. I'm just not gonna show it, but it's something insane. 8.8 .8 million followers. A mom who just takes videos uh, parenting her two twins. Oh, I've seen her. 8.8 yeah. .8 million, and a lot of it, of course, is the mom's personality is cool. People identify with the mother. They wanna follow her. But again, who's following you raising your two twin babies? Mm -hmm. It's very insane to me. And with 8.8 .8 million followers on TikTok, that's your job. You don't need another job. You don't have to work for any other income. That is your job. Yeah, and I do think that there are, but unfortunately, I think it's more of the minority of these parents that are um, doing this in the best interest, or maybe financially to help their kids go to college sure. and to do certain things. Sure. Like I know a lot of that's could be a factor for people getting their kids into acting, but I don't think it's a majority. I think a lot of it, unfortunately, is ego driven or insecurity driven. Yep. But also red flag, you know, like the emoji with like or how people will do a tweet and then they put a bunch of red flags. Mm -hmm. It's like when they have um, a social media handle for their unborn child. Have you seen influencers doing that? Yeah, where they have handles for their kids before they're born yep 
it's so insane to me guys like i feel like we're we're headed to just like this dystopian technologically connected from the day you're born era and it's wild like the age of these people who are becoming famous and apparently in, in doing some reading on this tiktok is having particular problems as being a hotbed for child trafficking and children selling explicit photos of themselves on the internet because tiktok has a private account feature where you can private your account right and nobody can see what you what you are posting unless they are following you and now this is insane there are children young kids i'm talking like seven to 13 years old who are creating these private accounts on TikTok, posting naked videos of themselves and having men follow them on private accounts. Oh my gosh. Isn't that insane? Isn't it crazy? And it's becoming a just more and more of a problem on TikTok because their, their regulations on the platform are, are just unbelievable. And I was reading into the algorithm on TikTok as well. If you're a young child who is on TikTok and you linger on a video for a certain amount of time, it tracks the lingering. It also tracks your, your fingers as they move on the screen, what you're interested in, whether or not you're looking at the comments. And the algorithm pushes sex-related and drug-related content to young people. So they see those videos, they linger on them and go, well, I don't know what's going on here. Or, oh, this girl's shaking her butt on the camera here. And they linger and the algorithm goes, oh, you're interested in that? Let me give you 10 more videos. You watch those 10 videos, let me give you 50 more videos. Then it becomes 100 more until your entire platform is exactly that. And it's doing it to younger, younger users. PSA, get your kids off TikTok. I don't care. Yep. As long as they're under 18, get them off ASAP. You are the parent. I think it's worth it. It's not worth the risk in the long run. It is not worth the risk in the wrong one. And in, in speaking on that, let's talk about another story of a TikToker who happens to be 15 years old. Not going to show her picture, uh, but we are going to scroll down. So I don't even know if I should give this girl's... Sure. I mean, the, the story's all over. It's in, it's in headlines everywhere. Uh, her name is Ava Madri. And Ava Madri was a TikToker and is a TikToker. And actually, I will show one of her videos. Uh, she has 1.2 million followers on the platform. She's currently 15 years old, although I believe started making TikToks at 13. Her videos are lip syncing videos and dancing videos. And this is, you know, what, what TikTok is really famous for is making young, pretty girls famous for lip syncing and, and dancing. Now, she amassed 1.2 million followers on TikTok and ended up getting a stalker. And the stalker is an 18 year old man who was watching her videos, became obsessed with her, ended up stalking her and finding out where she went to school, made friends and started talking to some of her friends from the school, paid them to send him uh, personal photos of her, paid them for her address, ended up entering an Xbox lobby or a PlayStation lobby, whatever it was, with her little brother to befriend him. And this all came to a head when he got her address, showed up, tried to shoot into her house with a shotgun and bust the door open. And her father, who was uh, apparently a former police officer, had to shoot and kill him. Wow. <laughs> I had never heard, I had never heard of this. Um, I mean, granted, I'm not on TikTok anymore, but this is nuts. And that mm -hmm. what's even more crazy is the fact that she's still on TikTok. The girl is still on TikTok. And I remember reading this story for the first time and going, there's no way that this girl who was either 14 or 15 at the time of this attack is going to be on social media anymore. There's no way her parents are going to allow that. And I actually read an article and I don't have the article here for you today, but the the article was from was quoting her parents saying oh well she loves tiktok so much and she wants to continue to be a positive role model on the platform for other young women and that she she gets so much validation from the likes and she loves reading people's positive comments about her so we couldn't possibly ask her to not be on the platform we couldn't possibly not put her life at risk at this point. And didn't you say that she may have another stalker? She does have another stalker. She took it to court and court, the court threw out the case. So I don't know the validity of it, but she did go to her parents and said, hey, another guy is stalking me at school. We need to take this to court. They took it to the court and the case was thrown out for some reason. But clearly this is an ongoing problem for this girl, but her parents want her to be a positive role model for other young women. And just for a second, let's look at look at the content that she typically makes. This has 43,000 likes. 
She lip syncs in videos, and apparently this is positive social media content that other young people need to see, and that her, their 15 year old should be should be uh, posting on the internet. And if you just take a quick minute to scroll through the comment section, you'll find that it's overwhelmingly male names: Jack, Caden, Aiden, Adrian, Brian, Frank, Cade, Ryan, Jesse, Gabe, Robert, Ryan. I find it really hard to believe that you want your daughter to stay on TikTok because she's being a positive role model for other young women. I have a feeling it's because 1.2 million followers gets you a lot of money. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking parents are are noticing how how big of a market there is for this and then going, oh, yeah, well, we just allow her to do it. You know, she's making money for college. She's doing something that's good for her. Yeah, we kind of talked about this before the show. I could almost understand whether you are conservative or liberal. You know, there's some young people that are wanting to do political TikTok and political activism and that kind of thing that are trying to be role models in that sense. And even if I don't agree with their politics, I can kind of see why they're doing it and why there's a platform and audience for it there. Yep. But for lip syncing and dancing in front of a camera, I it's not there. Right. It's not worth it. What could you possibly need that for? And like we said before, with with one in four people saying, I want to be on the internet, I want to be an influencer, what does that turn into with parents who are having children? Mm -hmm. I, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a, a lot of people. It was about like, I was reading another article that said, you know, 29 to 40% of people worldwide dream about being an influencer on social media. And you said- That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why we're on the show today. <laughs> Catch me at- the Catch me at the Sabrina Cosmos. Um, but you said you were watching like the Charlie and the Dixie D'Amelio show. What was that like? Okay, I highly recommend if you're considering putting your kids on social media, if you're one of these parents that we may be talking about, you're a little, you're feeling a little guilty right now because you're hoping your kid is in that next viral clip, or if you just want to get your kid into child acting, I would actually recommend watching, I never thought I'd recommend this, The D'Amelio Show that's on Hulu because it came out and I thought it was going to be like the Kardashians where it just kind of followed these girls, these millionaires now who got mm -hmm. famous just dancing off TikTok, followed them and their families doing all this cool jet setting, spending a lot of money, this and that. It was actually like more so the opposite where it the whole show features the crippling anxiety attacks of these two young girls mm -hmm. that skyrocketed to fame did not know how to handle it are struggling to balance everything and handle the comments and what people have to say about them not only just in their comments feed but like pretty much every news outlet every time they do a small thing whether it's right or wrong it's blown up on like all over the media mm -hmm. um and it it honestly painted a really a much more realistic photo or video or sorry painted a realistic picture of what their lives are like. Yep. And it's super sad. These kids are like not okay. And honestly, I kind of feel like the parents are worse for putting them in that situation. Yes. If your kid is crying with crippling anxiety day in and day out and you don't do anything about it, they would basically like, their, the parent's solution would be like, let's give her a one week break. We'll just cancel everything for a week and then they return back to it. And she's back to having anxiety attacks. And it's so sad. I really empathize with these girls and I never expected to have that reaction from from the show, but I it's thought it was really good. Dollar signs and dollar signs and dollar signs. Like I recently watched this uh, video of um, like mothers trying to push their teenagers into modeling and push them into these careers. And we're talking like 13 year old girls who are being pushed into an industry that's all about their, their body image and how many likes they get on social media. And their mothers subjected them to a challenge where they posted videos on H&M's page and whoever got the most likes was the winner of the challenge. And I could not think of something that is just more emblematic of where we are right now with influencer culture and people being on the internet and just wanting that for their children, wanting this easy sort of passive income. It's not even passive. It's just at the expense of your own child and their own sanity that you are now able to 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 make money. That young girl who started doing OnlyFans at 18 years old and her parents kicked her out of the house, but then they realized how much money she was making and invited her back and now she's back in the fold. It's unbelievable unbelievable well and it's sad too because especially like for these young women i would say like these parents are not validating these young girls at home so they are literally seeking validation by posting them on social media to see yep. the likes and the content that they can get yep. and it's like as a parent you have to look back and think like if my child is seeking this elsewhere why are they not getting it at home right and 
in in this hyper anxious, hyper depressive culture, is social media the answer? And I know a lot of people will hear this and go, well, it's just a sign of the times, right? They're going to feel bad if they're not on social media. They're going to feel disconnected. They're going to want to do it even harder. They're going to want to go on social media because you're not allowing them to. And I think there is like a fine line that you have to walk as parents where you don't build any sort of resentment with your child and you when it comes to what they can and cannot do. But also there's harsh lines of just danger. (laughs) It's just danger at that point. You know, I'll deal with my kid being pissed off at me if it means that child predators aren't watching their videos on the internet. I'll deal with my kid being angry about what other kids get to do if it means that, you know, she's not going to have her her self-image destroyed by randos on the internet. These are things that we're willing to deal with. And I was actually in Arizona uh, last night and I did a speech and this girl walked up to me, she was 13 years old and she was amazing to me. She's probably watching the show now, so hi. And she came up and she's like, oh, I watch your show on YouTube and her mom came and her mom happened to be a doctor and she's like, yeah, it's so rare that, that girls have female role models that they can look up to. And I said, well, you know, are you where are you watching? You should, you know, let me know, send me a message on Instagram. She goes, well, I, oh, I don't have Instagram. I'm not on social media. And I, for a moment, was just like, oh, I can't believe, A, that was my first thought, and B, it's so refreshing to hear from this young 13-year-old girl, oh, yeah, I just don't have social media. And she was so fine with it because clearly she's equipped with the the critical thinking skills to realize why that's not something you need. And I think as parents, it's just important that, uh, you know, when I get to that stage with my child, just to have the discussion about why it's not necessary and make them feel good in the decision to not have social media. Amen to that. That's so rare. It makes me sad, too, because, I mean, when I was a teenager... I'm not that old, but I'm a little older. I mean, we had MySpace. It was like the beginnings of Facebook when social media was kind of like not everyone had it. It was kind of a fun extra thing. Mm -hmm. But now it's just inundated where I feel like more young people are confident and in themselves online. But when they come to actually interact with people in person, they don't have the same social skills because they're more concerned and consumed with how they appear online than in real life. Yeah. And I can already hear, you know, I can already hear the feminist argument of like the the sort of what were you wearing argument? Well, why can't they be on social media? Isn't it the men's fault that they're the ones exploiting these kids? If they're, they're the predators, why is it my on, the onus on me to stop my child from being on the internet? Dude, because we live in reality. I'm so sorry, but we live in reality. And we can talk as much as we want about like predatory men and trying to build a culture where that does not happen and trying to educate people about what's acceptable and about what's not acceptable. But at the end of the day, do predators exist? Yes, they do. So it's not really a, oh, well, what was she wearing argument. It's a do you care about your child's safety argument? <laughs> like I can hear it now. Because it happens all the time. As soon as you try to restrict something or, you know, oh, well, well, why why should she have to run her life in a way that makes it acceptable or in a way that, that safeguards her from what other people want to do? Because it's simply reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. To switch to a somewhat lighter note, I'm seeing a lot of comments mm-hmm. on the feed about... Um, MySpace. Do you even know what MySpace is? Yes, I know what MySpace <laughs> is. I know you got your top eights and all that fun stuff. Never on MySpace, but familiar with MySpace. Oh my gosh. Everyone used to think, we used to think we were like coders on MySpace because you'd put like a background and a song and it was so fun. But yeah, I was like, do you even know the sound of dial-up? <gasps> Sorry, guys. Oh my gosh. I wish Taylor was here to actually do the sound effects. <laughs> I'm working the boards today, so we're about to rename the show unapologetic or apologetic because I'm probably going to say sorry a million times for messing up. But I wish Taylor was here just to put the dial up sound for you. We might have to do this off Ooh, off the show. We will. We will film a separate video where we go through and I, I go through millennial stuff and then they do the deal with the Gen Z stuff. We did get a super chat uh, from Sup, my dude. Thank you so much for your super chat. It says Boomers had Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers when they were kids. My generation had Arthur, Doug, and Rugrats. Kids today have TikTok. That yeah. says it all. That was yeah. deep. Did you see someone did a recent cut of all these old Mr. Rogers clips where he's saying like the most base stuff all about how boys are boys, girls are girls. Yep. And he reiterates it so many times. I'm like, did Mr. Rogers know that we were going to be here as a society now? Yeah, I, I think I honestly think he did. I've I he was little love Mr. Rogers. I love him. I've I've watched like Won't You Be My Neighbor and all this different stuff and the documentaries that they've done on his life and, and who he was as a person. And just as a tangent, Mr. Rogers like front and center priority for the entire duration of his life was protecting children. 
was protecting them from from what they were seeing, protecting them from how how television was going to just completely rot their brains. And he wanted to be a healthy person who was who was on these platforms and able to speak to children in a way that they understood. And it's so funny because when I went back and watched his documentary, his major concern was kids seeing little bits of violence on television. It became really popular in his time and before he started making kids programming for people to sort of like throw the pie in the face and slap each other around and the slapstick sort of semi-violent comedy was becoming really popular with young children. And he actually went before, I want to say, it was it was some some sort of high hierarchy when it came to television. I believe even politicians were there as he went and spoke. And he said, you know, we need to safeguard children from this violence. What they see is what they are. What children are exposed to on a daily basis is what they become. It's what they emulate. It's what they mimic. And he fought so hard to have his sort of programming on TV and to safeguard children from seeing so much as a clown getting a pie thrown in his face. That is what he was dealing with back in his time. Look at what we're dealing with now. What a precious gem of a man. Man, I like want to get emotional thinking about it. Do yep. you feel like we have like a Mr. Rogers nowadays? Because right now I'm racking my brain and I like can't think of anyone that's really that positive. <laughs> I used to think it was Sesame Street and then Sesame Street went like totally woke right. the last couple years. Like, get your vaccine because Elmo told you to. Yeah. Jab me Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so dark. <laughs> it is really dark. I don't know. I'm sure there's stuff out there. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. as in tune with kids programming as, you know, other other, other sorts of things. But you would be more so now that you have a child. I mean, obviously we have PragerU kids content, but I would say that's for like a little bit of an older demographic, more like elementary school, but like really young kids. I'm like, I don't know. We haven't really like let our son watch TV yet because he's still, he just turned one. So he's not really, he listens to like five little ducks on loop and that's about it right now. But it's like a little nursery rhyme. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me that it it's gone from people like Mr. Rogers and that old school Sesame Street era, which was obviously super profitable, but less about profit and more about the content and what lessons were going to be learned. Like, I'll I'll keep hearkening on the Mr. Rogers point, but he curated all of his content for the conversations that he was having with children and having those difficult conversations with them in a way that was made for their minds, made for where they were at that time in their lives. Now it is like, how can we produce, 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 shell it out to them? How can we get them watching as many videos as possible? Cocomelon's a great example of that. And I know you wrote a whole article about that. Do we dive into Coco Melon? Go for it. Man, this is going to get dark. You guys are going (laughs) to think I'm like a crazy (laughs) child cartoon conspiracy theorist. But Coco Melon, can you look up how many... how many subs? How many subs, subs for Coco Melon. It is insane. And, and f- describe what that is for people who don't know and what yeah. demographic of children is is watching this. So you probably aren't familiar with Coco Melon, but if you go on Netflix and you see it's almost always trending on the top 10 on Netflix. It is a kids show that when you initially watch it, it's just a bunch of bright colors, kid, um, these cartoon kids singing like story, uh, what's called like nursery rhymes and little songs it's like very catchy and cute um but I could not understand because all of my friends kids were are obsessed with it to where and then when I used to be on TikTok I noticed that there was these TikTok trends of people that would um start Coco Melon and they would see how quickly their kids would react and run to the TV to watch it Mm -hmm. and then when they turn it off they would actually record their kids having full-blown meltdowns like tantrums when Coco Melon went off and I got I was really curious about it so I started googling and I found out that Coco Melon was sold to Netflix for like three billion dollars, which is out of control because I think Sesame Street is only worth a couple like a couple hundred million. It's Mm -hmm. not really worth that much. I was like, man, why is it worth so much? And why is it always trending? It looks like such a basic show. Mm -hmm. And then I found this other TikTok that totally sent me down a rabbit hole where basically what they did was they compared a scene from My Little Pony and they counted the number of seconds between scene changes. So normally when you watch My Little Pony, there's like maybe like anywhere from like I think it's like three to like eight seconds between scene changes. So even Mm. as simple as like a character's face head on and then at an angle and then like the other character. Right. Whereas when you watch Coco Melon, the cadence is like one to three seconds between scene changes. So what happens is when babies are watching this combined with the bright colors and the music being so catchy and upbeat, it's changing every one to three seconds. So kids' brains are just completely like getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit while they're watching it, making it actually addictive. Mm -hmm. 
you can call me a crazy conspiracy theorist, but if you've seen a kid watch Coco Melon consistently, you will see it. No, so. people are commenting in the chat down below. They're like, Coco Melon kids are a different breed of child. And it really is true. And it plays into, like you said, the dopamine hits and instant gratification. And as soon as that goes away, much like with young teenagers on TikTok and on social media, as soon as you take it away, the attention span is not capable of comprehending and taking in the real world. Cocaine melon. It seriously <laughs> is. And by the way, they have 142 million subscribers. Crazy. 142 million subscribers. That's Ryan's World times like five or six. Oh my gosh. Insane. I insane. So mix <laughs> children's programming and, and what they're watching and constantly being on screens and tablets from the moment they're born with parents filming them, putting them on the internet, becoming famous for their babies and their toddlers and then their young kids and then their teenagers. Then those teenagers who one in four want to be influencers hop on TikTok, start making dance videos, filming their lives, filming every second of their day in order to achieve the goal of gaining more validation, gratification from random individuals who are watching their videos and then growing up into a culture where everybody is constantly consuming social media. Yeah, and I think like something that we can relate to too is like we're not saying your kids shouldn't be exposed to any media or that your kids should be like basically like you can only raise them on a farm to raise them right away from the internet. But I think it's a lot of things within moderation. Unfortunately, we've lost sight of moderation as a society. Like, yep. trust me, we were on an airplane last night with my one-year-old. And, uh, yeah, we screen recorded a couple of his little lullaby songs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, halfway through the flight, he was getting really fussy. We play sure. it. I'm not going to judge parents, like, that do some screen time. I mean, we're probably going to be those parents within moderation. But when your kids are constantly watching it and constantly used to being entertained, especially like if you're feeding them and they're used to watching TV while they're being fed. And then when you go to a restaurant setting and they don't have a TV and then they start acting out, it could be like a dangerous thing. But I will say for TikTok, I think it's worth getting your kids off of it completely. I don't think that there's moderation with TikTok because the whole algorithm and the way that that platform was designed was not to give you moderation. It was to give you constant fulfillment like Coco Melon. Yes. And be be like aware about the fact that when they are making these shows and when they are making the algorithm for TikTok, they literally work with scientists on how to have you just be completely engulfed in this in a way that makes you not want to ever stop watching. That is their goal. That is their primary driver is on TikTok. How can we just feed what this person is watching over and over and over on a loop and on a loop and on a loop? And with Cocomelon, with those quick scene changes is how can you never get bored? How can you always have something new to watch? How can it be that we never have a, an ounce of boredom in watching this show? So they just want more and more and more and more and more. And it's no coincidence that these these companies are making billions of dollars three billions of dollars from ne three billion dollars from netflix do you think that they're just concerned with what good kid content is or they're concerned with what you're going to be watching the most and at the longest length it's money it's all about the money it's, it's money your kids are worth three billion dollars to netflix that's yep. what it is and dude it's the same thing with that that ryan's world youtube channel that we showed you we scrolled how long did we scroll for and didn't get get to the end of how many mm -hmm. videos were being made and how many millions of views did that kid have and you know he He's gonna he's gonna grow up and hopefully look at this very kindly uh, and you know uh, with millions of dollars in his pocket I imagine he's going to be doing very well but at what cost you know uh, I have a feeling we're never gonna really know the true effects of what this sort of technologically advanced and plugged in culture is gonna have on children because nobody's gonna put in the work to find that out because apparently it's gonna hurt their their bottom line. It's gonna hurt the amount of money that they're gonna make if people start to wake up to the negative effects of what are happening to children with this sort of stuff. Do you think this Ryan kid opens his presents in front of people at birthday parties or do you think he's like over it? He's like, <laughs> he's like I'm, I'm so done. On camera, I'm off. I'm he's like, if you're not out. paying me to open up this gift, I am out of here. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, you know, and like you said, you brought up Jeanette McCurdy, and I think these are sort of conversations that are going to be happening and are going to continue to happen. Jeanette McCurdy, when she, for those of you who don't know her, is a Nickelodeon star. She was on iCarly, a salmon cat, uh, and was just constantly in the Nickelodeon child star space. And like Sabrina said, this is very similar to child stardom. And what they ended up doing with child stars who were on television and in movies where their parents were exploiting them, and particularly exploiting them for financial gain, they ended up having to put laws in place that protected the funds that these children were creating since they cannot advocate for themselves as they are minors. I wonder if the same thing is going to be done for TikTok stars and YouTube stars like this because your parents are exploiting them 
for millions and millions of dollars. And that's money that they just get to pocket at this point. I don't think there are any laws promoting or, or not promoting, protecting child influencers. So mm-hmm. that's going to be an interesting thing to see is when these children do grow up to the age at which they're going to college, they're able to advocate for themselves. They are uh, able to make financial decisions. Are their parents going to have the money there for them? And is this going to be a lawsuit? Yeah, who knows? And I mean, I I don't want to say that all the parents out there are like this. There may be some parents who genuinely their kids just like happen to go viral. They posted yes. a funny video, did not expect it to go that way. But unfortunately, I think that there are a lot of parents that are looking to be that next viral video. And that's these are the ones that we're kind of talking about. Yeah. And I think that's why the corn kid huh, sparked this whole conversation, because I ended up seeing his original video maybe two, three weeks ago. I don't remember exactly when it went viral or what day specifically. And not even a week later. Cameo is on it. Chipotle's on it. I'm I'm betting right now there's going to be several other companies that come out with ads with the corn kid. I'm I'm mm-hmm. calling it right now and it just seems like the machine is getting faster. And you know a, a left-wing point for this that I think is actually worth exploring and worth talking about is is this a late stage side effect of capitalism? Mm-hmm. It kind of is. It kind of is. And I know we talk often on the show, free market doesn't mean free, la, 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 let's do whatever we want, let's exploit kids, let's steal their money, let's do all this different stuff. Uh, It's not without regulation. So what does regulation, particularly protecting children, look like as uh, we get deeper into this? I have no idea. I have no idea. But I can see the argument being made. Yeah, I wish I I wish I had some magic ball that I could look into and be like, it's going to be okay, but I'm, it's looking bleak. Yeah, it's looking a little bleak. And I'm just hoping, you know, like I said, I met that girl uh, at the Arizona event last night. And to think that her being 13 and not being on social media is rare was a scary thing to come to terms with in that moment. No, it's crazy. So I meet a lot of kids through like Prager Force, our student program and stuff. And I can't tell you how it's so wild because before you would think that like your kid had to be on social media or they had to go to public school to be normal. Mm -hmm. And now with everything that's gone on the last few years, the kids that I see that are the most well adjusted are either not on social media or they're homeschooled. They're the ones that know how to sit at a table and make eye contact and carry a conversation. It's the ones who are being shielded, Mm -hmm. shielded in the right way. And that's not to say that your kids, uh, a lot of people are going to say, well, you have to socialize your kids. Yeah, absolutely. You have to sh- socialize your kids. What is the right way to socialize your kids? It's clearly not Instagram and TikTok. It's clearly not being on the internet and watching things like Coco Melon and being on uh, just the constant insta gratif- instant gratification social media platforms. Uh, it's clearly not some of the exposure that they're getting at public schools, which is this one in four Gen Zers who plan to become social media influencers. And that's not even a discussion that we got into, but we were talking about this before the show. The threshold for going viral on social media is getting higher and higher and higher and higher to where children are having to engage in extremely dangerous, horrifying activities that are only going to grow. And I know we all lived through the cinnamon challenge where kids were inhaling cinnamon in order to go viral on the Internet and, you know, having their their lungs engulfed in this stuff and ended up in the hospital. We went through the The Tide Pod. Pod. (laughs) Tide Pod challenge. Kids are eating Tide pods and ending up in the hospital most recently the blackout challenge where kids are quite literally getting on their phones holding their breath until they black out filming it and posting it on the internet oh my gosh I and a kid that. has died a kid has died doing this already it's terrible so i have a couple of friends that are like junior high teachers and at public schools and they were saying that it is so wild because now you can't take kids phones away in school i think it's like a it's a legality where they have to be able to have access to their phones at mm. all times mm. And the things that these kids are doing to go viral is nuts. Half of them are cussing their teachers out and recording it yep. just to get a reaction because yep. now you can in most schools in California, you can't even suspend kids anymore. Um, and then, yeah, they're like doing crazy stunts. They're tra- yep. trashing the bathrooms and doing whatever they can because they want to be the next viral sensation. And when you have a society where kids, that is now the bar of fame and it's achievable now because of social media, it's so scary where that can go. It is. Oh my gosh. Doom and gloom on today's yeah, episode. Sorry. But Let's really, talk about something positive. Uh, I'm on a positive note. <laughs> parenting. Parenting is worth it. Parenting is worth it. And there are positive ways to parent. And I and I am sure that there are parents watching right now whose kids are on social media, but they are on it in a healthy capacity and they still have the critical thinking skills to navigate what is good for them and what is bad for them. And that is something that is a silver lining. That thirteen year old girl that I met 
a silver lining. The fact that she is so cognizant of what she should and should not be watching and what what platforms she should and should not be on. Uh, these are all things that I feel like if we equipped our kids with the critical thinking skills to navigate these things, they will be fine. It's unfortunate that just so many parents are not taking the time or just unaware of the consequences. Yeah, and I kind of touched on this earlier because I wonder where this stems from and if it is like almost insecurity, if it's mothers and parents that are seeking connection and they Mm -hmm. almost use their kids to do that. Like the best thing that you can do is go find friends that are parents that share your values. Like it sounds so cheesy, but um, I don't know whether it's through church or like connecting with parents through friends of friends, but Mm -hmm. to be able to find that, I think that you can find that validation in relationships with other parents that you can bond and really connect with and learn from rather than just on social media. Mm -hmm. And kids that are getting a healthy life that doesn't require screens don't want they don't long for screens you know so long as they are happy and content in the real world they don't need the stuff and I think explaining to children and actually taking the time to have the conversation with how much they are inundated with social media to say social media is not real the real world is so much better it is so much more fulfilling for you and you are going to be so much happier than every other child around you because you are not on it because there is this sense of you know the FOMO the fear of missing out for children that is probably more intense in childhood than it is in any other stage in our lives when you're looking around at other kids who are talking to each other on Instagram and Snapchat and are sharing TikToks with one another. I have honestly, I've been thinking about, you know, the future of parenting and as far as my parenting will go once I have kids. And I think that's probably going to be one of the hardest stages of parenting is having your kid in a position to watch other kids who are doing things that they cannot do. Mm -hmm. And knowing as a parent what the present danger is in allowing them to do that and having to hold your ground on that in a way that doesn't build resentment. Yeah, I think it comes down to like when you're younger and being a parent and not your kid's friend. Um, mm-hmm. I remember when I was younger, I had I had some friends who their moms and them were like best friends and it was so cool. And I remember one time being in a fight with my mom and being like, why can't you just be my friend? And my mom said, looked me in the eye and said, you have enough friends. Mm-hmm. I'm your mom. Mm-hmm. And I will that will always stick with me. And it has resonated. And I'm so thankful for it now as an adult yep. and a parent. Yep. And there there's just lines you have to draw at some point. And I I I think most of the people who are watching this show are, are drawing those lines and are super cognizant of this. But I do want to urge you, you know, if you know parents who are have their kids invested in this stuff and they're on TikTok and they're on social media, send them the stream. Maybe they're unaware of exactly what is going on on these platforms. We try to give you sort of an all-encompassing view of all the different ways that this could could go wrong and talk about some of the ways that it does go right and the reasons why people make these choices. But I think a lot of people, particularly with young kids on TikTok, have no idea what is happening on these platforms. And really quick, it's not even just TikTok. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if you go on YouTube and Instagram, now almost every social media platform has a similar um, a similar component to TikTok. So like you'll go on Reels on Instagram mm-hmm. or now YouTube. YouTube has like the short clips, yep. which are essentially when you're on a phone, it's, it's essentially TikTok, but it's on YouTube. So yeah. just keep an eye out for what your kids are watching or like we said, just pull them off, period, if they're under 18. Yeah, the kids are not okay. And the parents are even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and on that note, that is today's show. Thank you so much for watching. If there's a point we did not make that you wish we did, drop that down in the comments below. If there's something where you really agree with us or you have personal experience with, drop that in the comments down below. Uh, and, you know... Let us know what has been your experience with with these issues. Do you have children and are they on social media? And if so, is it in an unhealthy capacity? Is it in a healthy capacity? Are you having trouble reining it in? What issues are you facing when it comes to social media and parenthood? Anything else, Sabrina? I think that's it. Lord <laughs> knows I can use the help, but we're trying out here. So I'm very new in the parenthood journey. So I have a lot of a lot of respect for people. Um, I don't know what people look for, but um, when it comes to getting parenting advice, but I know for me personally, I look for people who have raised young, happy, healthy, and successful kids. Like, Absolutely, that is the best. Those are the best people to learn from. Stay happy, stay healthy, guys. And if you like the show, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we put out a new video. Every time we go live is typically 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And if you'd like to listen to the podcast, go to Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. Some people don't like what we have to say and they leave one-star reviews. But how could you not like protecting kids? 